rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسيما كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون My dear brothers and sisters we begin with the praise of Allah سبحانه وتعالى our creator and sustainer and we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek His help in all aspects of our lives and we thank Him for His countless blessings upon us. Verily, whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to go astray, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of our worship, our complete devotion, servitude, our ultimate adoration and obedience, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator. He is one having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our beloved messenger Muhammad and upon his wives, his family, his companions, and all those who follow in his righteous footsteps sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, the topic of today's khutbah is how Surah Al-Fatiha addresses the questions of our time, the misguidance of our time, the calamities of our time. How Surah Al-Fatiha addresses the difficulties and hardships that the ummah is going through and it identifies and addresses the sources of misguidance in the world today. Now all of us, when we see what is taking place with the genocide in Gaza, and what is happening to our brothers and sisters in Palestine, we are shocked by what is happening. But remember also that by Allah's will, this has ignited a global movement 
calling for justice. It has ignited a global awakening amongst all people, recognizing the immorality of what is taking place and being inspired by the steadfastness of the people of Gaza in the face of such incredible suffering. People are inspired by their example, and many people are even embracing Islam. Just last week or the week before, before my Jummah khutbah, a young sister came to embrace Islam. Students are coming, they're reading about Islam for the first time, and they're inspired by the example of the people of Gaza. Now, when we see this incredible suffering and the incredible evil that is taking place, where do we turn to as Muslims? The answer should be that we turn to the Qur'an for guidance. The Qur'an is our source of guidance. And in this khutbah, I want to focus on how Surah Al-Fatiha provides us with that guidance. Surah Al-Fatiha is the surah that we recite 17 times a day, a minimum, in our salah. We recite it a minimum of 17 times a day, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His guidance. It is a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But do we contemplate the incredibly profound meanings of Surah Al-Fatiha? Do we contemplate the depth of what of the message of Surah Al-Fatiha? There is a beautiful story, it's mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, that one companion, he's not as famous of a companion, his name Abu Sa'id ibn al-Mu'alla. Abu Sa'id, he was praying in the masjid. And the Prophet Muhammad says, saw him, and the Prophet ﷺ called out to him. And he didn't respond. Even though he was in a voluntary prayer, he could respond to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ afterwards, he asked him, you know, why didn't you respond? And he said, you know, I was praying. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, do you not know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اِسْتَجِيبُوا لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ Answer the call of Allah and His Messenger when they call you to that which will give you life to the message of Islam. Now, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu then said something very profound. And this is the point of my mentioning this story. He said, Shall I not inform you about a'lami suratin fil Qur'an? The greatest surah in the Qur'an. Shall I not teach you about the greatest surah in the Qur'an? And the Prophet Sallallahu told him, Before we leave this masjid, before we exit from this gate, I will tell you. So then the Prophet started talk to, talking to him, and they were walking, and he had the Prophet held his hand, Abu Sa'id's hand. And Abu Sa'id said, I was deliberately trying to slow down and walk a little bit more slowly so that the Prophet would tell me the answer, because he did not tell me yet. And they're getting closer to the, to the gate, and the Prophet has not yet told him. And he's so you know, interested to know what is the greatest surah in the Quran. So before they leave, he said, Ya Rasulullah, what about the answer? You know, what is the greatest surah in the Quran? And the Prophet Muhammad told him that it is Surah Al-Fatiha. He said it is the surah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. It is a sab'a al-mathani, the seven oft recited verses, and it is the Quran Al-Azim. The Quran Al-Azim, one of the names of Surah Al-Fatiha is the magnificent Quran, and Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimullah, he says it's because it summarizes all of the message of the Qur'an in the seven verses of Surah Al-Fatiha. So this is a profound surah that if we reflect on it and contemplate its meanings, we will see the guidance that we see in the surah. And when we look at this surah, we see also the, the beauty of one of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad where the Prophet told us that Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this surah. Verily Allah says. And when the Prophet tells us something that Allah says, that is called hadith qudsi. That is called hadith qudsi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the surah, قَسَمْتُ الصَّلَاةَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي نِصْفَيْنِ I have divided the salah between me and between my servant into two equal halves. And for my servant is what they have asked for. Now if you look at this hadith, you will notice that the hadith, uh, in the hadith it mentions a salah But the hadith is talking about Surah Al-Fatiha. So the scholars of Islam, they explain that one of the meanings of this is that Surah Al-Fatiha is named as salah Because it summarizes 
the entirety of our salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've divided the surah between me and my servant into equal halves. So you look at the first half of Surah Al-Fatiha, it is talking about the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second half of Surah Al-Fatiha is talking about our request from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we understand from this is that when we make a request, we ask Allah for guidance, we ask Allah for His help, we have to first focus on rebuilding our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, renewing our covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when a servant says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hamidani Abdi, that my servant has praised me. And when he says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Athna alayya Abdi. When he says, Maliki Yawm al-Din, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Majadani Abdi. That all these different levels of praise that the servant is engaged in. And then when he says, Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasna'een, you alone do we worship? And from you do we ask for help? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is between me and my servant. The first half is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You alone do we worship. That is our duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then from you alone do we ask for help. We ask for help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who d- does the ummah turn to for help today when they see the situation of our brothers and sisters in Gaza? Do we look towards other worldly organizations which have all failed to stop the genocide? Do we look to the tyrants of this world for help? Do we look to the immoral institutions? Or do we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recognize that help will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look at the situation that we've seen in the past few weeks. None of us could have predicted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make the struggle of the people of Gaza a means for students around the world, for their hearts to be opened up to justice, that they're all doing these solidarity encampments. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transforms the situation of people when we focus on renewing our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Help will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when we say, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us along the straight path. This is the most important thing that the servant can ask for. The guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that straight path, that journey can be a lonely path. And that is why we are asking in the plural. We're saying, إِهْدِنَا Guide us. Because التَّرْبِيَةَ الْإِسْلَامِيَةَ is التَّرْبِيَةَ الْجَمَاعِيَةَ that the revival that Islam wants from us is a collective revival. We have to be connected with our community. It's not just about me as an individual turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I need to connect with my brothers and sisters and bring the ummah back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who do we follow in that example? Surat al ladina an'amta alayhim. The path of those upon whom you have bestowed your blessing. The path of those who you have favored with the gift of hidayah. And that is مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in another verse in the Qur'an, it is the path of the prophets and those who live by the truth, the siddiqeen, those who die upon the truth, the shuhada, and the salihin, the righteous. Those are the examples. You see that from this verse we see the human being wants to be in the company of the righteous. Every human being. And that is why so many people's hearts have opened up by seeing the example of the people of Gaza. Because they see the beauty of their faith, the the strength of their morals, their integrity. They see they're striving in the face of all this difficulty and hardship. People recognize who is on the side of truth and justice and who is on the side of evil and corruption. The most basic moral truth for a human being is that it's wrong to kill children. And yet people are going through all these gymnastics to try to justify it. And these students on these encampments are just saying, just stop the killing. Stop the killing of children. It's a basic fitri response. It is a response from the human fitrah. And so people are inspired by that example. 
And they don't want to be amongst those who are doing injustice. They don't want to be amongst those who have gone astray. And this is one of the other lessons that we get from the surah that we see with the concluding verse of the surah that we need to ensure that we always are on the path that leads to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not on the path that leads to his displeasure. We need to do that muhasabatun nafs. We need to hold ourselves to account. And right now society is not doing that. Now people are searching for truth and meaning right now because they recognize that the existing system of values in the world has failed to protect the people of Gaza. It has failed to leave, lead to justice. And this is how Surah Al-Fatiha answers some of the largest ideologies of misguidance of our times. When the fundamental value in your ideology is that people, the most important value for people is just freedom to do whatever you want, then justice has no place. It becomes the freedom of the rich and the powerful to participate in colonialism, in genocide, in taking advantage of others, in subjugating others. But what is the moral value system of Islam that Islam calls us towards? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Hadid, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانَ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that verily we sent the messengers with the clear signs and we revealed to them the scripture and we revealed to them the scales of justice. Why? Why did Allah send the messengers? النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ So that people would be able to uphold justice. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he mentions that this verse shows us that the reason for which Allah has sent the messengers, the reason for which he has revealed his scriptures is to establish justice amongst his creation. This is the fundamental value of Islam. In his work, I'lam al muwaqqeen he explains that the Sharia in its entirety is about justice. In its entirety is about wisdom and mercy and compassion. This is the moral value system of Islam and this is why so many people are recognizing its truth and clarity in our times and embracing it. And this is why we as Muslims, we need to understand our own deen and we need to treasure these values, this great ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. When we say, Surat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim, the path of those who you have given your ni'mah, what is that ni'mah? It is the ni'mah of hidayah the blessing of guidance. This guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is the greatest gift in our lives. And we need to use that to fill the world with justice, to understand the rights of our creator and the rights of his creation, to revive and awaken in this world a moral sensibility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established us as an ummah for this purpose. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us an ummah? The Quran mentions, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas, ta'muruna bil ma'rufi, wa tanhawna anil munka, wa tu'minuna billah. You are the best ummah brought forth for humanity. Why? Because of these three things. You enjoin what is good, you call people to moral virtue, and the ma'roof is what people already recognize. These are the loftiest moral virtues. People recognize that with their fitrah, they know that this is justice. You call people to what is ma'roof, what is good, and you forbid what is evil, what is unjust. And you have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا Thus have we made you a balanced middle nation. Some of the scholars of tafsir, they mention that the balanced middle nation means that it's upholding justice. 
وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا So that you may be witnesses to all of humanity and the messenger will be a witness over you. What is the meaning of this verse? If you look at the tafsir of this verse, you will see that many scholars of Islam, they talk about how this verse applies in the Akhirah. That on that day, there will be prophets who will come and they'll say, Oh Allah, I conveyed the message to my people. And their people will say, no, no, we didn't hear anything. Ya Allah, we didn't receive any messenger. They're trying to make excuses. And so now between the Prophet and his people, there's this dispute. And this ummah will act as a witness and will say, Ya Allah, we bear witness that this is a true Prophet and, conveyed, and they conveyed their message and we are their followers. Why? Because the Prophet Muhammad told us about these Prophets. So we will become witnesses to the message of those prophets whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to establish truth and justice. But there's also a meaning that applies in this life. As some of the scholars of tafsir explained, لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ بِسَبَبِ حُكْمِهِمْ بِالْعَدِلِ لِيَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ بِسَبَبِ حُكْمِهِمْ بِالْعَدِلِ On account of you're judging according to justice. This is the importance of justice in our deen and in our value system. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who call others to justice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to revive the message of Islam in our hearts and to follow in the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. When we look at the guidance of Surah Al-Fatiha, we see how it answers all of the forms of misguidance, all of the various ideologies which lead people astray. And this is something we can reflect on in every part of Surah Al-Fatiha. When you say Alhamdulillah, you are being rescued from the misguidance of atheism by recognizing that all good that we see goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we want to be able to achieve something praiseworthy, we connect ourselves back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say, Rabbil Alameen, you recognize the misguidance of colonialism, of materialism, because the human being has no master except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Fir'aun, when he, when he wants to subjugate Bani Israel, he says, Ana rabbukum al I am your Lord, the Most High. But we have no Rabb except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, we fear no one except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, when you say the most merciful, the most compassionate, you recognize the misguidance of fascism, of totalitarianism, of any ideology which tries to stomp out any dissent. Because we are supposed to live in this world as vehicles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah, of his mercy, of his compassion. When you say Maliki Yawmiddin, you recognize the misguidance of secularism that assumes that the state will dictate your best interests. And we recognize that the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we must live by and what we must call towards because he will judge each and every one of us on the day of judgment. When you say Iyaka Na'bud, you are rejecting polytheism. When you say Wa Iyaka Nasta'in, you are rejecting materialism and naturalism. When you say Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, you are rejecting relativism. There is a straight path and we have to follow it. When you say Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alayhim, you are rejecting the misguidance of progressivism that thinks everyone in the past was immoral and now we have the answers. And when you say, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَضَّانِينَ You are rejecting the misguidance of liberalism that calls towards truth but fails to do action of, towards justice. And postmodernism which calls towards justice but fails to establish a commitment to truth. And all of this is something that can be explained in more detail. But just to give you a taste of the depth of the answers of Surah Al-Fatiha for the modern time and some of the guidance that we receive. 
I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts and keep us from going astray. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzak qulubana ba'adil hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma inna kanta al-wahab. اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم ارفع الظلم عن المظلومين في كل مكان وفي كل بلاد يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في غزة اللهم انصرهم اللهم احقن دماءهم اللهم داوي جرحاهم واشف مرضاهم يا رب العالمين إنك على كل شيء قدير عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر